Don't let anyone tell you that RV life is not affordable. You can camp right here for just $25 a month. And yes, you heard that right. Welcome to the channel. I'm Liz and in my four and a half years of full-time RV living, I had never boondocked before. So in this video, I'm going to share with you my boondocking experience, how I ended up staying not just for the two nights as I planned, but two weeks. I'm going to share some tips and also all about La Posa in Quartzsite, Arizona. First, I want to thank you for helping me reach my goal of 100,000 subscribers. So thank you for subscribing. So yes, in all my time, of full-time RVing, I'd actually been avoiding boondocking. Boondocking, by the way, is when you're camping without hookups. You're not hooked up to water, electric, or sewer. Now, I had been avoiding that because I enjoyed campgrounds. I felt safe and secure in campgrounds. I had visions of loose dogs, loose guns, and just all kinds of craziness on boondocking. And I found out that that was just not the case. A lot of people boondock on BLM land. This is government land scattered multiple mostly on the west side of the US. Typically you can stay for 14 days for free and then you need to move on and you need to be at least 25 miles from your site. You don't generally get anything, you're just out there in the wilderness. Now where I'm staying is what's called LVTA. It's a long-term visitors area. You can come in September 15 and stay all the way to April 15 and all you pay is $180. And the reason why there's a fee is that this BLM land provides water access and a dump station. Now, if you just want to stay here for two weeks, it's $40 for two weeks, and that's what I did. But I will be back, and I probably will stay a month or maybe even two months. Now, to boondock, you need to be able to have some kind of power source, either a generator or solar or both, and I highly recommend both. In my case, all I have is a generator. I have a 7,500-watt generator, but I don't have solar. People that are out here doing this here in La Posa, most of them have been doing it a long time. They're out here for months they're prepared, they have solar. I decided to practice in my campsite in Tucson where I had hookups and everything, but I thought, okay, I'm gonna practice. The first thing I did was just see how far my water would go. I have a 100 gallon water tank in my 2005 Alpha, so I feel pretty lucky, plenty of water. So even without conserving, I went eight days, and that was with showers, even doing laundry. So that wasn't a worry, but typically what happens is you fill your gray tank or you do run out of water. You might want to plan some boondock friendly meals that maybe don't use a lot of pots and pans. It may help for you to do one dish meals or even cook over the campfire, whatever you need to do to save water. Now, one tip is when you go to clean your plates, use a paper towel and wipe off any of the debris before you wash it. That will save a lot of water. Most people who've been boondocking will tell you that that's what happens is they run out of water because so much water is used to wash dishes. You of course could use paper plates too and that would help. For electric, I can really only go like a day, a day and a half before my batteries run low. I've got five lithium batteries. So I'm running my generator for an hour or two every meal to try and keep the battery going. Going. Now there are generator hours here because I'm sure you're thinking, oh my gosh, this place is going to be so noisy with everybody using their generators. Well, the pros are not using their generators. They've got enough solar that they rarely have to turn the generator on. The generator hours are from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. So you can't run them at night, which makes it super peaceful. But here's the thing about being out here is that everyone's scattered pretty far apart. So if a neighbor does run the generator, you really don't notice it or they're not running it for so long. So I get out here and I have to say, all my campground experience kind of made me intimidated. I'm so glad I had friends here because I kept saying, where do I park? Where do I set up camp? Where do I go? And they kept saying, anywhere just camp anywhere. And I was like, where? I was so used to having a designated campsite or at least very defined borders. There are no site borders here. You just pretty much can camp anywhere. Because it's out in the desert, it's flat. So pretty much anywhere you go is gonna be a good campsite. So I kind of had to get over that hump. So here's another tip. When you come on to BLM land, notice the spacing of the campers. How far is everyone spaced? You don't wanna come right up next to someone. That is not good. 
you definitely want to kind of keep the spacing that you see. Right here at La Posa, it seems like everyone has their own acre. La Posa is in Quartzsite, Arizona, and it's on over 11,000 acres. In addition to water and dump station, there are some vault toilets, but there are not any showers. You can camp here with a tent. You just need to be within a certain distance of one of the bathrooms. Even though it's quiet and we're spaced pretty far apart, there's a strong sense of community here in La Posa. I feel like I could walk up to anyone and ask them if I needed something. People wave when you walk or drive by. I mean, it's just wonderful. I also like some of the quirky things about the area. It seems that people that stay here, they do some kind of rock art. They'll make designs. I've seen a guitar, compass, US map, all kinds of art that they'll do in the rocks or, or they'll do rocks marking their site or making a little wall. It's really kind of fun. In this area, there is some biking, but it's rough biking. You would need full suspension, but it is beautiful to get out there further in the desert and see the views. If you have an ATV or some kind of off-road vehicle, there is places to do that nearby. And the sunsets and sunrises are amazing. Quartzsite itself is a small town. It only has a few thousand people, but a million and a half people visit every year in January and February. Quartzsite is the RV Mecca. There is the big RV show in January at Quartzsite every year. There is also RTR, which is a van life gathering, and there's rock and mineral shows. Quartzsite is also the place to be for rallies. If you have, say, a truck camper, a tag, a schoolie, one of those chrome buses, an alpha, there will be a rally for people just like you. It is so cool to find your people and do rig tours, attend workshops, and that kind of thing. Definitely the place to be, especially January and February. Now you don't want to be here between April 15 and September 15. You actually can camp here, but there's no water or dump station access. So you're limited to 14 days free and then you move on. But Quartzsite, Arizona is one of the hottest places in the U.S. They've been over 120 degrees here in the summer, so it's not where you want to be in a camper. The town itself is very RV-centric, plus the stores are kind of quirky. The hardware store has a liquor store in it, so you're there, you're shopping for your tools and your things for your RV, and then wow, there's booze right there. The grocery store, there's several. One of them is under a tent, which is kind of fun. Now, a lot of places, including restaurants, do close for the season, so you won't find them here year round. Quartzsite attracts all kinds of people. I love it. There's way more diversity here than in a campground. Someone of modest means can be parked right next to someone who's quite well off. This is a place to meet people from all walks of life and to make new friends. So I thought I was just going to white knuckle my boondocking experience to stay and visit my friends for a couple nights. I've liked it so much that I'm actually going to be here the full two weeks. I paid just 40 bucks, which works out to $3 a night, I think. If I come back next time, which I probably will, and I stay for a month or two, I'll do that $180 pass. I mean, you just can't beat that deal. Now, as far as loose dogs, I have not seen them. As far as loose guns, I haven't heard them either. So it actually seems to be a very safe place. I love how peaceful it is. I can't believe how big my campsite is so it's really been a good experience if you've enjoyed this video please like subscribe and share and let me know if you would ever boondock or if you've tried it and you don't like it or if you do like it i would love to hear it as always these are exciting times to push past fear build confidence and live amazing